Welcome to this short and sweet crow pose tutorial. Crow pose is generally the first arm balance that people learn and master, so if you're new to arm balances, you're in the right place. When we set up for crow pose, we want to place our hands like we would for plank, which means they're shoulder width apart. The fingers are lightly spread so that we've got a nice surface area to balance on. We're making life harder for ourselves if we're smallening, it's not a word, but you know what I mean, smallening the surface area we're balancing on. So the fingertips are spread and the hands are ever so slightly turned outwards so that usually it's your index finger that points forwards towards the top of the mat. From there we also want to make sure that our eye of our elbow is pointing forwards. So by that what I mean is that the arms roll forwards and as you do that you should feel that your shoulder blades are broadening across your upper back and if they're not broaden them. So we're thinking of rounding the back much like when we do in our yoga class we do cat and cow. Cat pose is this pose like this. So we want to think of cat pose Pose, whilst we're doing crow pose, all these different animals added together. So with those hands shoulder width apart, with the fing index finger pointing forwards, we're rounding our upper back and turning the eye of the elbow to face forwards. From a little squatting position, so you can come onto the balls of the feet, we want to think of lifting our hips nice and high. So crow pose is a counterbalance. All arm balances are counterbalances. You're trying to make the weight in front of your wrists, counterbalance the weight behind. So generally that's your chest and your head counterbalancing the weight of your pelvis and your legs. Now your pelvis and legs are very, very heavy, which means most arm balances, you always need to go further forwards than you ever think. We always want to think of a forwards motion rather than a down. So we place the hands shoulder width apart, we roll the elbows to face forwards, we find a cat back with broad shoulder blades, we lift the hips towards the sky and then we're ready to try and find our crow pose. So the chunky bit of your knee on the inside of your kneecap, so this bit just here, is going to come to rest onto your triceps, the back of your arms, which are, which are there in line when your elbow is facing forwards. We find that point on the back of the arm where the knees want to rest with those hips in the sky and we're making that counterbalance. So the chest comes forwards, the chest and the head are trying to weigh more than our hips until our feet may or may not leave the floor. So in order to find this balance, we have to go forwards with our body weight, not down, which means we want to look forwards as well. Generally, we follow the direction of, of our eyes. If we're looking back towards our feet, we're going to go down. And that's when we start to go splat and we find people in our little splatty pose. So the thighs have to squeeze in towards each other as we pull the belly up towards the spine, because this is obviously using quite a lot of core to hold your body weight onto your arms. So again, with the knees on the back of the triceps, the hips are high, squeeze the knees in towards the arms, so much so that they even might start quivering towards each other, just as a demonstration of the effort that you're putting in. So squeeze the thighs in, eye of the elbow faces forwards, the chest and the gaze are going towards the front of the mat. Now you can stay here, your toes can stay on the floor, so you're taking the balance element out of it, but you're still getting all of the strengthening aspect. The upper body is still strengthening, you're still having to use your core to balance, and you're working on keeping as little weight into your toes as possible. You could work on one foot, coming in towards your bum, trying the other foot, or another handy little trick is to use your block underneath your feet, bring your little squatty pose onto your block instead. All the same applies, hands onto the mat, lift the hips, knees onto the back of the triceps, but you're already lifted that little bit further away from the floor, so it becomes that little bit more accessible to find that counterbalance point between the two. One other way that I like to practice or, or teach people to get into this one is to pop the block in front of you. And that's going to be where you're aiming your forehead. So you're going to make a big triangle with your two hands and your block. So we're setting the hands just like we described as if we were doing plank. We're lifting the hips high. We're taking the knees on the back of the triceps. We're leaning forwards. I can let my forehead rest onto the block. So I've got another balance point here. Now making sure that if you're taking this variation, <laughs> making sure if you're taking this variation, you're only ever so slightly resting your forehead onto the block, you are not dumping the entire weight of your body through your neck and onto that block in front of you. If anything, it's just a little bit of a 
safety blanket or something to aim towards to encourage you to go forwards rather than down. When I learned to do crow pose, I took a big pillow and a cushion and I stuck it there on top of my mat. And that was a good way of getting over the fear of wanting to go forwards because if I was going to fall, I had a lovely soft landing underneath my face. Thanks for watching and I hope your crow found some flight. You can check out this playlist for some beginner friendly yoga flows or this playlist for some other individual pose breakdown tutorials. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you want to be notified of my latest releases. Welcome to this short and sweet crow pro crow pro 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 Welcome to this short and sweet crow pro I can't say it. I can't say it anymore. Crow crows.